What's up everybody, do right back at it again with another update video on Ground Ranch. Today we're going to be talking about patch 1030.2. I know, I know, this video is a little late, but this actually has quite a bit of information in it, so I thought I'd go over it. So yeah, let's just go ahead and jump into it. Let's start off with uh, what's new. It starts off here with online bug fixes. The server browser should once again display the correct player number for every dedicated server in the list. I didn't actually realize that that was an issue. It seemed to display everything just fine for me, but great that they actually took a second look at that, I suppose. The next thing here is the time of day fix. The time of day setting should now correctly replicate within dedicated servers no matter what and successfully load the time displayed on the ops board. If you happen to find an exception, please let us know. Then it talks about dedicated server.bat. Dedicated server owners can now trust the dedicated server.bat batch file to behave nicely and allow servers to shut down and restart as expected. AI updates and changes. Navigation improvements. Nav meshes were cleaned up to allow bots to more competently navigate the map so expect better mobility and cover your sectors and they go into it a little bit here ai no longer attempt to use ladders which is a good thing because usually anytime that i would see them trying to get up on a ladder they would just literally stand in front of the ladder and not even climb it, it says here they were constantly becoming stuck and a fix will require some tricky work that we do not have the time for in this release as a result the ability was turned off temporarily so that they won't be sitting ducks in the map and it says here that it would likely return in 1031 but it would have to be a better and more reliable system in order for it to come back but it actually does return in 1031 that would actually be kind of cool because 1031 is supposed to be the biggest update with a lot of stuff but anyways increased draw distance bots will now pop into view or draw at twice the distance they did before you should be able to see tangles out to around 300 meters or 328 yards expected resistance limit increased to 50 tangos you can once again gunfight your way through up to 50 tangos if you want to previously it was actually only 30. I guess I wasn't around for one that was actually up to 50. But yeah, I definitely tried going up against all those 50 and I just kept dying. Like I got pretty far, but they just overwhelmed me when I tried to play solo. When I have more time, I want to see if I can actually beat it. But yeah, let's continue on here. Although we cannot really recommend it due to the possible performance impact and also the, and then it just kind of like ends there. I wonder what that's supposed to mean exactly. That it's too hard or what? I don't know. Continuing on. Side perception fix. While testing friendly bots, Chris detected a significant issue with the AI's perception curve and fixed it. They should now have a much better awareness of each other. For example, they will become more alerted when seeing a friendly bot engaging and be generally more responsive to sight triggers, so stay on your toes. Detection ranges have not been increased. It goes on to say, this fix does increase difficulty, particularly in how fast a reaction time now appears. We recommend players turn down the expected resistance values if they wish to keep prancing around the AO. Yeah, I definitely noticed that there is a bit of a difficulty increase because they actually do surround you like they're not as dumb as they were before it actually talks about difficulty levels have been adjusted due to the above fix making bots a lot more reactive we have tweaked the current difficulty levels slightly in order to offset the extra challenge to a degree moving on experimental adding bots you may now use the console command to add bots to your team in terrorist hunt or pvp or the opposing team pvp only when playing offline or as a server admin simply open the console and use this right here on the screen and then it really like gets into it right here where so that's kind of cool that you can actually add in a bunch of like um different types of bots for different types of teams yeah this has like been a really like ai focused update so far so that's kind of cool hopefully they make it more simple for people like me just put like a big red button that says add enemy team and sliders you know but anyways that's pretty cool that you're able to actually like test that kind of stuff unlike some other games you know but let's move on here new suppressors for the m110 and the m110 k1 suppressors have arrived and each has its own dedicated model. They were modeled after the Long Boy KAC M110 Suppressor and the Oddball KAC 762 QDC CQB, the version seen on the Marsoc K1s specifically. And there's two pictures here, except with the suppressors. And is that an attachment I see? A bipod attachment? Was that always on there? I don't remember. Man, when are they going to add freaking bipods? It's going to be amazing when they add those. Down at the bottom here, it says the M110 has also been updated to use more authentic M110 flash hider by KAC. AC or CAC. Not really sure how you say that. But moving on here to the next weapon, it says AR-15. The AR-15 type rifles, M4A1, MK18, M416, etc. have all received new suppressors, which I actually did see. They look pretty nice, by the way. It is modeled after the Surefire SOCOM 556RC, one of the most widely used suppressors among US Special Operation Forces. Pretty neat, pretty neat. It comes with both FDE, Flat Dark Earth, and Black. Simply pick your favorite from the muzzle device drop-down menu. 
menu. And then I guess they have a bit of a question here. Can we expect more skin choices for attachments like this in the future? And it replies with, damn right you can. I think they did show off a bunch of like new skins like a while back, but they haven't been actually added to the game yet, as far as I've seen. It continues on to say, in fact, the Anpec 15 now offers the same skin choices. Choose either the black or tan version from the lights, lasers, attachments tab. That's pretty cool. I definitely do like the tan color of the weapons. I think it's probably better for like urban environments and stuff, but uh, yeah, let's push on here. Here's a number of cosmetic fixes. I'm gonna go through them really quick. Patch skin and other cosmetic fixes. Pouches now correctly match the color of the platform belt that they are attached to or go with the most appropriately available. Skin, black, tan, or green. Pretty neat, pretty neat. Pouch skins. Pouch skins have also received another color correction pass to reduce the variations in tone. So your rig should now look a lot more uniform. Various other items have also received more subtle color correction pass. Moving on. The headset attachment will now use the correct model when attached to the arc rail helmets. Skins have also been fixed. Pretty neat. Moving on. Fix some texturing issues on the MP5's fire selector and grip. Cool. The MP5 bolt positioning has now been corrected. Not really sure what was wrong with it, but okay. Moving on. Fixed texturing issue on the SR25 M110 762 NATO magazines. Not sure I really noticed that, but cool. Moving on. Selecting mail number two, head should no longer occasionally display the white skinned arms. Oh yeah, I remember that issue. That was kind of funny. But that is the end of all the fixes here for cosmetics, it seems. If you're someone that's made it to this part of the video, then congratulations! You have a chance to be entered into a free giveaway of Ground Branch. The developers decided to give me two free copies, and I didn't know what the hell to do with them, so I thought I'd give them to you. If you're someone that would like to be entered into the giveaway, then all you gotta do is answer these three questions and put them in the comment section. Simple as that, right? The winners will be announced in the next Ground Branch video, which should be in about a week or so. It'll definitely show up in the eye icon at the top right and at the very end of the video in the end card. So look out for that. Okay, back to the update. Up next we got UI interface or UI. Our pass on the item customization screens, edited, formatted, and repositioned the bottom message to be more general and helpful. Change the drag and drop attachment slot icons to a more subtle white circle with a drop shadow effect for visibility. Updated some of the attachment tab titles to be more intuitive, e.g. lights, lasers, replaced with the less obvious accessories. Cool, cool, cool. Updated the layouts for all ops boards to match the style of the terrorist one. The header for the ops board now displays is the current game mode, e.g. Team Deathmatch, to make it easier for players to know what they are about to play. Oh great, that's actually really helpful, because sometimes I get into matches and don't realize I'm getting into the wrong one. The exception is Terrorist Hunt, which still displays a randomly generated operation name, e.g. Operation. Oh really? Hmm. Up next, the After Action Review screen now displays a clear mission match results title and a little description of the outcome underneath. Yeah, it looks so much better than the previous one. I actually had a bit of an issue with it previously because I'm not really sure what like a lot of this stuff actually means because it was just a bunch of symbols and a bunch of random numbers attached to that. But now it's just so clear. I love it so much better. But anyways, we also replaced the AAR player stat icons with a clear description. Kill accuracy, shots, hits, etc. Yeah, I love that. It's so much better than the symbols. But anyways, customization operator screen changes. Change the profile column title to operator as it was leading some players to mistake if for a global operator loadout save profile. We will have that feature eventually. Oh, okay, cool. The skin selection triangle no longer displays a short version of the name. Instead, longer names now break into two lines. That should make the skins instantly identifiable and easier on players that are not used to acronyms and other abbreviations. I'm not sure what this actually means. Is it talking about like the player names on the back of the t-shirt right there? Or are you talking like hovering above their heads? Because I think I do have a bit of an issue with the ones above their heads. It's that uh, the text is now like gray. So I can't even see who those people are when I click on the button that says to show their names. Like last time I played, the names were like yellow, but now they're all gray. And also they kind of like knocked it back too because you were able to actually see the enemy team too. But now it doesn't seem like you're able to do that. So then it's like, we can still see the bad guys. So how come we can't just see above their heads, right? I mean, I get that it's for like you not telling people, you know, their positions and stuff like that. But uh, as someone who likes to spectate a lot, I would love to see their names. Then again, it still could be in the game. Maybe it's just the admins that are running the server that are messing with it. Who knows? But anyway. 
anyway, it's just that I, you know, go on a little bit of a rant there. Moving on. Minor art passed on several UI elements, most notably the in-game interactive prompts. Change the look for the defender's objective HUD in defend PvP. Updated the gear on the main menu operators to a more tactical look. Okay, cool. And that was all of the user interface changes, it seems. A lot of good ones that I really liked. A couple of other ones that I'm just hoping that they either fix or get around to, you know, making better. And, uh, yeah. Let's move on to the next thing here. We got audio. Gunshot sound occlusion fix. I think that's how you say that. Although Mixon has been working exclusively on version 1031, he has taken the time to provide a quick fix on a lot of gunshot SFX that had occlusion disabled. Spatial audio volumes in the alpha red side of the ready room are messed up, resulting in the sound being cut off in unexpected spots. This is particularly noticeable in the testing range. And that's pretty much it for audio. But one thing that I want to add here is that I really hope that they muffle everything that's outside of the shooting range because it gets really annoying when the freaking gun sounds are just going off right next to you. Like it sounds like it's right next to you when he's shooting. And that's just really annoying when you're just trying to talk to people. Like they need to like really muffle that in my opinion. I actually talked to the developers about that. They said that they definitely look into that. But anyways, they have new default settings. Heads up, the default link control now uses hold instead of toggle. You can change that link style under settings controls. Yeah, I was like, what the hell, man? Why is it on hold? They got rid of my toggle, no. Nah, I was able to actually put it back to toggle. But one thing that I noticed is that the lean is a lot less really out there. Cause before you'd be able to like really like lean out there, put your whole head out the thing. But now it's, I'd say it was closer to like escape from Tarkov kind of lean. Like it's kind of like that kind of lean where it's not really a lean, you know, you're kind of just like peeking out, which I don't know how to feel about that. Like, I think it's, I don't think it's bad. I just think it's just, okay. You know, temporal anti-aliasing or TAA is now the default anti-aliasing method. You can change it under settings video. The next one says standard fire mode has been changed back to semi-auto. You can select your default fire mode under the settings gameplay. Okay, cool. So nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Let's move on to the next thing here. It says miscellaneous added a weight value for various items that did not have any defined fixed updated the weight value for several others fix some typos here and there change the display name of a few items and skins for better accuracy consistency and comprehension okay cool and here is where we get to some important announcements animations and character update oh here we go provided that a game breaking issue is not found in the current patch v1031 is the update on which most of the team will be focused on in the next couple of months earlier this year we were forced to delay the big animation character update and we're hoping that they would be ready for version 1031 unfortunately we have had to make another difficult decision the new animation character assets are now tentatively scheduled to be in version 1032 oh man oh well Shit. I mean, I always knew that animation is like really tough to do and they only have like two animators and they're redoing freaking everything with every weapon. So that's a lot to do. So of course it's going to take them a long time. Oh, well, at least they told us, right? Although a lot has been done and Mike continues to work on new animations, implementing the new character rig is an all or nothing process, meaning that we simply cannot make the switch until everything is at least at the same level of functionality as we have currently with the old rig. With just one animator and one programmer, I thought they had two, huh? Whose work is often required on every front. Pushing the animations back once again is just the reality of things that we will have to deal with. Ah, uh, well, I mean, that sucks, but at least we know that it's still coming. It's just gonna be a bit. So what will version 1031 entail? Having determined that we are going to have to delay the animations and character work again, we also determined that Ground Branch 1031 will now be a bigger user experience update. As awesome as smooth animations and brand new assets are, at the end of the day, there are lingering issues in Ground Branch that are a lot more vital to the experience than cosmetic ones. We need more purpose in the game with objective based game modes. Yeah, I've been saying that for freaking ever at this point. Like the animations is going to be something that's really big. But after that, they seriously need like game modes, you know, something for us to actually do. But anyways, we need better AI. We need a better way to use weapon attachments. We need better multiplayer round rotations. Oh my God, please. Like, I mean, I really like the game modes that their community manager uh, prowls does but the problem is that it's not automatic like he's just kind of like making it up as he goes you know it'd be great if we could actually you know complete stuff and the round actually ends and all that we need better multiplayer round rotations we need 
default team skins restrictions to make pvp games easier to set up yeah exactly we need in general a more rounded and thought out gameplay experience yeah you freaking hit the nail on the head right there within our constraints that is the kind of thing we are going to be working on with version 1031 along with hot new content updates such as map work items visual effects and improved sounds of course yeah i actually really like how he acknowledged like a lot of the issues that the game really needs so it seems like this update is going to be a game modes update i assume which is interesting because as this was talked about a few days ago today i believe or maybe it was last night i can't remember there was a tweet that actually went out saying that they need an assistant programmer so they're really going in with this right now yeah so if one of you guys are an actual programmer ground batch is actually looking for one right now and if you guys are interested but uh yeah here's another major update the price is going up soon the intention to eventually increase the price point for ground branch has been noted in our store yes they've been saying this for a while that they actually do want to raise the price when a lot of things actually come out and faq since we first released on steam and when update version 1031 is released in the upcoming months the asking price for ground branch will be raised to 29.99 so this is like a 10 dollar increase i believe right yeah 10 dollar increase we'll talk about this in just a second let me just finish up here with regional pricing adjusted accordingly a few reasons why we're going to do this now ground branch has been in early access for over two years with no price change and it is now a lot further along than it was in the beginning with version 1031 it will be even more so so that's their first bullet point is that the game has come a long way and that is true I'm not gonna lie it has from where i played it a long time ago to now it has definitely improved here's the next bullet point we genuinely feel that despite the relatively slow development and current lack of polish we are offering fans of the hardcore tactical shooter genre something unique that no other game out there is offering yeah i could definitely see that if you're someone that's a fan of the original rainbow sixes then you'll definitely like ground branch there have been countless times where people were randomly playing the game with me and they'll say something like you know this game is really giving off like an old-fashioned rainbow six vibe and then i go ahead and tell them that well you know that this game is actually being made by one of the original people who worked on those old games then it finally clicks with them and also there's quite a bit of customization that you just don't see nowadays it's not as in-depth as escape from tarkov but i mean you can still do quite a bit of stuff in this game so okay i agree bullet point three the game has been sitting at a very positive user score for both recent and all-time reviews with this approval rating at about 85 percent as such we believe that the improvements that are planned for the next main update will justify this new price hmm i'd have to see what's in this update because i'm not entirely sure if i agree with that but i will say that there's a lot of stuff in the game already that already brings out the price in my opinion but anyways so if you were holding off on getting ground branch or needed a capelli argument for your friends who still are waiting this is it join now while it's cheap yeah i mean i definitely think that ground branch has earned it you know earned that ten dollar increase i've been around this game ever since it launched and actually before that because they did give me a free copy but i've really stuck around ever since because i really wanted to know where this game was actually going to go and at this point in time i will say that there is an actual vision for this game i can actually see it getting completed even though it is taking a bit longer than i would have liked but it is coming along slow and steady because with every update that i see that comes to this game it's almost always a banger sure it's not freaking every month but whenever they drop one it's always something that's significantly greater than the previous one so yeah when that update drops i think it's definitely going to be worth that 30 dollars but what are your thoughts do you think that this game is going to be worth 30 dollars as soon as that 10 30 comes out let me know what you think down in the comments below because i'm gonna end it here if you enjoyed the fact that i cover games like ground branch then go ahead and like the video share the video and comment down below if you're someone that's new to the channel then stick around subscribe ding the bell you never know you might find something that you like on the channel if you're someone that would like to support the channel then become a patron it really helps and with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one bye bye